ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه وسار على سنته إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته ولزوم أوامره وكثرة مخافته فإنها شعار المؤمنين ودثار المتقين ووصية الله في وفيكم أجمعين يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد إخوتي في الله حديث اليوم سيكون بإذن الله تعالى عن مفهوم التوحيد و كيف يجب أن نتداوله وكيف يجب أن نفهمه وكيف يجب أن نربي أبناءنا عليه ولكن سأنتقل بإذن الله تعالى إلى الخطبة باللغة الإنجليزية لوجود عدد كبير من الضيوف لعل الله عز وجل أن يفيد بهم ومنهم إن شاء الله all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gift of being believers, the gift of being healthy, the gift of having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in this time with all the problems and the sufferings and the confusion that is covering the whole world. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all blessings be upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon all the prophets and the messengers of God from the time of Adam through Ibrahim, Moses, Jesus and the seal of the prophets, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran made it so clear that all the messengers who were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the time of Adam through all the way to Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him they all started calling their people for one the first and the most important part of it is to believe in Allah and Allah alone, to worship God Almighty, submit to Him and not to anyone else, and not to associate any partners with God Almighty. This is so clear when you read the Quran and you read what is the message that has been of how the prophets and the messengers of God started their da'wah how they convey the message to their people. The first thing they said, believe in the oneness of Allah and worship Him. And then after that, they address all the social, economical, all the other issues and problems that the society is suffering from. One of the verses that you will find it repeated in so many places in the Quran, like when one of the prophets will address his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized it in one verse. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, which roughly means that every messenger we sent before you, O Muhammad, we reveal to them that there is no God but me, so worship me. That was the verse. And it was so clear in many other verses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the stories of the other prophets. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on one of the prophets saying, his people, Ya qawm, 
Allah malakum min ilahin ghayruh. O people, O my people, worship Allah. There is no God, no deity worth of worship but Him. And that was revealed on the Ad for Thamud, for Salih, for all the uh, tribes and the messengers of God that were sent to those tribes. When we look at the Prophet وسلم, Prophet Muhammad, the seal of the prophets, he was not different. What was the first thing he did when he received the revelation? When he received the message and the appointment of being the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he do? He went on a top of a small mountain and he called upon his people. O oh, people of Mecca! And it was some, something that is common in the tradition of the tribe or the people. That when someone go on a top area and call upon the people, this means there is something serious that they need to worry about or to listen at, listen to. So the people of Mecca came around the Prophet ﷺ to listen what is going on. And he immediately started with the same message, that I am the messenger of God. God Almighty revealed the message to me and say, La ilaha illallah. Declare that there is no God but God Almighty, worth of worship and submission to, you will be successful in this life and in the hereafter. And the Prophet ﷺ, like all other prophets, their call for tawheed, for monotheism, for believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was received by the people in the same way. Persecution, torture, denying, fighting, torturing his, their companions and their disciples and the others. It is the same response by every tyrant who are usually in control of any town or any city or any place or any community. They will immediately refuse to submit like all others, equally to the one God who is the God of all. So this is something that is so clear in the message of Islam. And Allah, the Prophet وسلم, what's strange about his message is for 13 years in Mecca, that's all what he did. 13 years continuously, all what he is teaching is the love of God, the submission to God Almighty, complete submission, ultimate submission, and ultimate love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the message, 13 years. Many people, unfortunately, <laughs> many Muslims, when they read, for example, one of the hadith, one of the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shahadati an la ilaha illallah. Islam was built, was founded, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, was, is founded over five pillars. And maybe our guests maybe have heard that in this kind of, in this visit. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam, is established or built or founded over five pillars. Shahada to an la ilaha illallah, to declare that there is no God but God Almighty. And iqam salah to establish the prayer. Wa ita'i zakah and to give the poor due that will be taken from those who are rich and be given to those who are poor and in need. And wa hajjul bayt, to perform the pilgrimage once in your life was Sawm Ramadan. In that authentic hadith, Sawm Ramadan was the fifth one and it is narrated in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Very authentic hadith. So when you read this hadith, you say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ taught those companions about the five pillars. But nobody knows that these five, this hadith is being said to the companions after 13 years, 
which is after Islam was established in Medina and the Muslims had a community and this is when legislations and all the teachings of Salah and Siyam and Hajj and Zakah and uh, uh, fasting, all of this was established and was taught to the companions after 13 years. The only one that is exception is the prayers. And even the five times prayers with no disagreements among the Muslim scholars, it was prescribed on the 10th year of the revelation or the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Ten year when during the journey to heaven to the Al-Mi'raj, Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj, which was prescribed for the Prophet ﷺ for his ummah five times a day. But ten years before that, the Muslims were praying, but not in the same form. And the Prophet ﷺ told them to pray, and it was the only prayers that they used to do is the night prayers that will stand to bring them closer with love and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the five prayers, as we learn them now, as we teach them now, as we practice them now, the fasting of the month of Ramadan was the second year after pilgrimage, after migration. The, the zakah, two years after the migration. Hajj, nine years after the migration, which means 22 years after the revelation that was given to the Prophet ﷺ. What does this is telling us? That the true Iman and the true Tawheed, as it was emphasized, is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. When he spent 13 years demolishing the idols, not physically, but in the mind and the intellect and the, and the heart of the believers. In a society that was having the Mecca, which is the house of God that was built by Prophet Ibrahim, having more than 360 idols around that Kaaba, yet 13 years the Prophet ﷺ did not even touch one idol or demolish one. But he demolished them first in the heart and the imagination and the ideas and who is God, how you submit to God, why God deserves and is entitled of all this love and submission. That was the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Planting the Tawheed in the hearts of the believers. Even when they were persecuted during those 13 years, and they wanted to raise arms and to defend themselves, the Prophet ﷺ said, Kuffu aydiyakum wa aqimu salat. Put your arms down and just Focus on your relationship with God until they were completely submitting to God Almighty, and it's not about the pride. When they stand up for the truth, they will stand up for the truth and not for their own ego or for their own interest. Thirteen years, dear brothers and sisters. One time, one of the companions came to the Prophet. ﷺ. He was tortured. And he come in front of the Prophet ﷺ. His name is Khabbab ibn al-Arat. And he exposed his back to the Prophet ﷺ. Say, O oh Prophet of Allah, do you see what they did to me? Because the enemy, the, the pagans, they were so furious that the Prophet ﷺ is demolishing the whole concept of idol worshipping and submitting to those idols that they make by their own hands. And they, instead of submitting to the one who controlled their destiny, the one who created them, the one who sustained them, the one who provide for them, the one who give and decide their end, start and their end, 
Instead of submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, they are submitting to those idols. So they were so angry. And how did they demonstrate this anger? On the followers of the Prophet sallallahu By torturing them, killing some of them, and so on. So here Khabbab comes to the Prophet sallallahu expose his back. Oh, Prophet of Allah, do you see what they did to me? Don't you call for, pray for Allah for us. Don't you ask for victory for us. And the Prophet ﷺ was at that time leaning on the side of a pillow. So he sat first and he immediately addressed Khabbab. He said, the people before you, those believers who like all the previous prophets and followers of the previous prophets, they used to, to be tortured. And sometimes they will take the person and they will cut him into two pieces, halves, in order for, to force them to give up on their belief and their faith, but they did not. But you are hasty. You look for a quick results. And by Allah, Allah will give victory to his deen. Allah will give victory to Islam to the point that the person will travel from Yemen all the way to here and he will not be afraid from all the problems because of the security that will come with the victory of Islam. And it did happen, but years later. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling them, this is the time for faith, come deep and inside your hearts. And love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also complete and ultimate submission to Allah as well. Those two together, dear brothers and sisters, the ultimate submission, the ultimate humility in front of Allah the greatest, Allah the creator, Allah has, who has the whole all power, Allah who control your destiny, Plus the ultimate love to Allah, the most merciful, the most loving, the most, uh, passion, uh, the most compassion, and so on and so on. Those two together, which will give you the, entitle, the title of Abdullah, the slave or the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the greatest honor that any human being can get, is being a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the Greater, the Most Gracious, and the Most Merciful. Teaching Islam, dear brothers and sisters, and especially Tawheed, this is how you need to make sure that you introduce Islam to the people. Sometimes you see someone who comes and he squeezed the whole Islam, the whole message in one hour, and he expects that the people will understand and will get all those fruits that you, anyone else will get from continuous struggle and strive for submission and for love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not was the way of the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with them, he sent them to Yemen. What did he say to them? He said, you are going to come to a, you are going sent to a people of the book. So the first thing you call them for is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. فَإِنْ قَبِلُوا ذَلِكْ فَإِنْ أَطَاعُوا لُكُمْ لِذَلِكْ If they accepted that, if they submitted this to this, means they have it completely full in submission in their hearts, that there is no God but God Almighty. And Prophet Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Then you tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for them five prayers. The Prophet said, and if they submitted to that, then you tell them that there is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed a poor due that it will be taken from the rich and will be given to their poor, to the poor. Imagine 
the Prophet Sallallahu teaching us the beauty and the way to show what is Islam is about and how to deliver the message of Islam. Ultimate submission, but also ultimate love. And any time any one of those two items, two components of being a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is missing, there is a problem. There is a problem. I remember one time a sister called me and she said that her daughter was taught by a, the teacher of those uh, who, who is responsible for teaching religion in our school, a few years ago this happened, that she was telling them, if you don't pray the five times the prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will torture you. The kids are six years old, seven years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will torture you. Your grave will be full of snakes and things that I don't know where she is coming from. Maybe weak sayings or hadith or things that are reported that has nothing to do with what the Prophet is talking about. But she thought that by using those undocumented, not sure or certain sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, which is not true, that she thought that by making them be afraid of leaving the Salah, that this will be the best way to scare them. When the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the prayers, رِحْنَا بِهَا يَا بِلَالٍ Comfort us by calling for the prayers, O Bilal. جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةَ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ The peace of my eye, the peace of my mind, the peace of my heart is when I stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the salah. There is big difference, dear brothers and sisters, when we only look at one side, but we forget about the other side. We forget about the so many verses that talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ Allah loves his servants and his servants loves him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many verses repeat the word of mercy so many times, describing himself the most gracious, the most merciful. Uh, I would like to ask, inshallah, if the brothers in the back come closer. We have some people in the back, they are still standing. Jazakumullah khair. So all of these meanings, dear brothers and sisters, so many verses in the Quran talks about that love. And any time we give more weight to one than the other, we will have a problem in the way we teach our kids, in the way we introduce the Tawheed and the Aqeedah and the Iman to the people. We learned it when we were young that, oh, Tawheed, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa sifat They teach it as monotheism or belief or faith into three categories. The oneness of Allah, the oneness of our Lord, that he is the sustainer. The first one is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is God and he is the one who deserves to be worshipped. And the third one is the oneness or they believe in the names and the attributes of God Almighty. And the kids will grow up memorizing these things. And we don't teach our kids that faith and Iman and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in every moment of your life. When you live your life, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see his names and attributes in the way you live your life, the way you walk up, the way you eat, the way you drink, the way you be honest, the way you be kind to the others, the way you treat your family members, the way you treat your husband, the way you treat your wife. In all of that, Iman and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely different than when we teach it as mathematics, memorize it one, two, three, four, five, and a few days later they forget what it is about. اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يتبعون القول اقول اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله فاستغفروه لا انه هو الذي
الحمد لله كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على خير البشر محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه المئيم الغرر ما تصرت عينه من نظر وأذن بخبر وسلم تسليما كثيرا هذا وعلموا أن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ بنفسه وثنى بملائكة القدسي فقال جل من قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وإبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وإبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت بارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك الشر ما قضيت اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا كربا إلا نفسته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته ولا محتاجا إلا كفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا ولدا إلا أصلحته ولا مجاهدا في سبيلك إلا نصرته اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعد تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا بيننا شقيا والمحروما برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله